Cycling and sailing, they provide the same kind of relaxation. The clock starts to tick slower, my head gets clear, faults disappear, I'm one with nature. And what's a better way than to share a bike boat trip with like-minded people? <laughs> Number 13. Spending a week traveling along the river Moselle through France, Luxembourg and Germany. See the landscape passing by in a slow pace, taste the wine and dance a little bit. Hi. Now, look at that. Hi everyone, I'm the fietsvlogger, which is Dutch for bicycle vlogger. And the next week I will be on the ship and on this bike. I'm joining a trip of boat bike tours and I'll be traveling from Metz in France to Cochem in Germany, mainly following the Moselle River. morning, just up. Uh, we're on our way from uh, Metz to Thionville. Today we actually will cycle through three countries. So we start in France, then we go for Luxembourg and then Germany. It's a beautiful day, especially for October. It's going to be a nice, warm, sunny day. yoga session on board. It's, it's so quiet here up the deck. We're a big enough rope, but there's no one up here. So today we're cycling with a Canadian. Yes, and we're so proud of that. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Still in France, we see some bunkers from the Second World War made by the Germans. They come over the mountains. So they didn't expect that, eh, the French and the Belgium. So then the Second World War was starting. Five years, ten years after the war, the there were still mines in the... Yeah. Uh, in all the, the other direction. There's a lot of people uh, injured again when working on the land. It was... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just had a French coffee, espresso. Might be the last, might be the last French coffee because we're heading to Luxembourg now. The DJ here in the group. <laughs> I'm Brandon, from Canada. And what's your, you're the DJ, yeah? DJ. Which, which song is this? This is Old Dominion, okay. American country band. Yeah. It's very good to listen to you on the ride. <laughs> Pretty cool to be here. This is the place where in 1985 a few countries, uh, including the Netherlands where I'm from, decided to open the borders and make free travel possible. So we didn't need any passports anymore. Let's, I have to look this up because I learned this all in history, but I kind of forgot. It were the countries Germany, France, Belgium, Luxembourg and the Netherlands who decided to open the borders in 1985 and later loads of other countries in Europe um, also joined the treaty. I'm having my uh, lunch on the border <laughs> between 
France and Luxembourg. No customs, no drama. I've been there with the bike, you know, it's so hard to cross. But here, nothing like that. Germany, we're in Germany. in Saarburg, which is a small city from the Middle Ages. As you can see, it's very picturesque. There's all these narrow streets going up. Uh, on the top, there's a big, huge castle. And the water force here was used for the mills. Uh, all kinds of different production here. Linen, oil, leather. And so it was a very active, rich little city. Going up now to the to the castle. And we're walking because it's a bit steep to cycle up here. Germany has all these really cute old little cities with pastel colored houses and really nice. One year. There we going. Castles are always up high and I definitely have more cycling legs than walking legs. Only a thousand stairs, right? You can do it. Even I have to talk. Are we there yet? Yes. Good. We made it. Yeah, we're the first. <laughs> <laughs> did you, I, I did you send that to me? So. Somewhere, somewhere there. You could do a the ship. <laughs> So all around this little city you can see wine yards on the hills. The Mussel is known, like the, this whole area is known for the wine yards. Today we've been cycling past a lot of wine yards and it's the Romans who actually brought that over here. They were all settling along the river, which was a good defense line. And well, they loved wine. So they started producing wine over here. Uh, yesterday we cycled past a site where there used to be a Roman villa and you could see the mosaic that used to be there. The slate in the ground makes it really good to produce uh, wine and that's because the slate keeps the warmth and well the plants need a lot of warmth and that's why this is a really good place to grow it. Oh and of course also because they're hills you get a lot of sun as well. Now back to the ship. That night we have a barbecue and before we know it we all start dancing. cycling along the water today. First we cycled along the Saar and then we took this little side river and then back to the Mosul. We arrived in Trier. The ship is behind me going for a little walk into the city. Do they still make uh, the ice wine? It's uh, very high sugar content, very expensive in Germany. 
It's the last green pin oh. when it's very It's got a noble rod on it. Trier is a very old city, actually one of the oldest cities of Germany next to Worms. First the Celts came here and then the Romans. For a while Trier was one of the capitals of the Roman Empire. So very important. It's kind of crazy to be in a big city again. Today we've been cycling along the river and it's been so quiet and now it's lots of people. But it's cool and as you can see it's sunny so that's good. So, uh, this is the dome. It's very old and big, and the organ. The organ is really cool. It's an amazing organ. It's really impressive. Such a view. I'm sitting in the jacuzzi and I'm looking at Trier. <laughs> like this. Oh, it's bad to retire soon. Bad time soon. See you tomorrow. Honey. Ready to go. And then suddenly there's a big gathering. <laughs> I just saw these people here all like, getting the grapes. Uh, so I thought I'd just stop and ask if I can make some pictures. And they said, oh yeah, we went out, but they're actually just finished. So I made a few uh, pictures. And now they're having lunch uh, together. Really cool. So uh, I'm going to ask now what, what the story is, what they're doing and stuff. Yeah, they're just harvesting the grapes. Yeah. Um, and uh, today I think it's the, the bottom half and maybe next week is the top half. And then they drive it uh, back to the hometown and they um, will start the process to transfer from the grapes to wine. Okay, I think a lot of grapes were already gone. Uh, yes, um, there are some some bad ones in it, but uh, some already turned into raisins. Yeah. So okay. they are more sweeter. Because I saw uh, they it. They the, look different. Yeah. yeah. Because they have the sugar in it. And now they're having lunch. Yeah, after the yeah, report. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not. This is all family, or we we are family. Mm. The one with the head. Yeah. And uh, the rest are friends and uh, um, people from a long time ago and they all come Every, together on yeah. this day and you call them Thank and you. they do it all for free oh they do yeah yeah just for the fun of it oh uh, just for I mean, okay of course, uh, and the lunch a bottle, bottle of wine or two at the end is uh, yeah oh cool nice fair enough thank you well, well, enjoy your lunch yeah, <laughs> after cycling on my own for a while i meet the group again and they invite me for a drink so i'm having a wine here Canadians. Canadians. <laughs> Canadians. <laughs> Canadians. <laughs> What's your favorite? My personal favorite 
is number 13. My boss's favor <laughs> is number eight. <laughs> mm. and, and what makes eight good and what makes 13 good? I prefer 13 because it's from a, from really, really old plants. Yeah. Over a hundred years old. Oh. And they are in a way, to me, in a way deeper. They have different Ah, I don't know where it's flavors, flavors in it. It's, and mm. number eight, it's a it's a really typical dry mulberry. Okay. Well, I think we have to try your recommendation number yeah, two. Yeah, I think it sounds good. Okay. Like yes. Yeah. yeah. Good number thirteen. <laughs> number thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> it says that three wines with the Canadians. Oh. <laughs> Uh, but it, was, it was very nice. And you can see people picking up walnuts everywhere. Really, really picturesque. It's me again. <laughs> we just arrived in Bern Castel, another beautiful old city. There is a story here about a sick bishop that was treated by wine and got there. It's a long day, very long day, but really nice. And there I go again. <laughs> it's getting a bit boring. I know. So I'm in a jacuzzi and look around me. Magic hour. morning I'm staying on board for a day I decided to take it easy and enjoy the beautiful surrounding from the ship because you know you can always choose to either cycle or stay on a boat it's a bit chilly this morning <laughs> foggy ah, but really pretty it's spooky it looks a bit spooky for 10 minutes and the sun is already coming up it's it's so great all these you know when the when the sun comes and you see all the different kinds of green in the wine yard you see the light green the dark green and colors are just changing all the time it's uh, pretty pretty amazing sailing into a lock so we're going into the lock now and then the water level will change and then we can go further see the water level is higher on our side and it's lower there Not snow yeah you're thinking three meters or something I'm going to ask the, the captain after this how many meters it is, but it's, it's going so fast. I've been in a lot of locks, but this is a, a fast one. See all the, all the walls here? We were the whole way up there, and then the whole way down.
just got in the second lock and this is even <laughs> deeper see how deep we are so these locks are needed because of course the Moselle you know, originally is a natural river and natural rivers have waterfalls and they have a lot of different water levels and that's why they made the locks so they're basically controlling the river here you can see the water falling down let's say hi to the captain hello hello so we have two locks there yeah how, how many meters well it depends it? sometimes you go down uh, 12 meters and the last one was uh, seven meters you saw the number 1939 that was Im Im impressive how high the water was in uh, that time it was flooding two meters over the lock but now it's beautiful there's low water now and is it hard to go through a lock no not at this moment because there is not much not much water if the water is floating then it can be difficult especially if you go down then you, they can suck you to the dam but now it's a piece of cake piece of cake <laughs> you don't need to do anything oh, it okay. goes by itself it's like a tesla it's like a tesla indeed <laughs> and how long have you been doing this i'm sailing all my life so this is the first time here in uh, on the Mosel, and it's, okay. ni it's nice here most beautiful thing is every corner is different Just gave me champagne. Soon we're going into the town here, Sel. It's another wine town, and then we're going to have a wine tasting. Is this cool? No, it has a black oh. color. She did mm. put it in the microwave. Yes. My name is Peter. I'm the old one. My son follows me in my business, but he has to play football today. <laughs> And my wife, Lisa. In 1948, our town parliament made a decision and they said that each wine which grows in our town is allowed to be called Schwarze Katz. And it's a nice story how this wine came to its name 170 years ago. In that time, the wine wasn't sold in bottles from the wine growing areas, but in whole barrels. In our case, the wine merchants came from Aachen, the big town on the Belgium Netherlands border, and they tasted many, many barrels. And after that tasting, they've been so drunk that nobody could remember this <laughs> <was coming. laughs> While they were discussing, my farmer's wife came in the mm -hmm. cellar to bring some bread, and we saw a black house cat, which immediately jumped on one of these barrels. It seems the cat was defending the barrel. And so the drunk fellows, of course, said, <laughs> must be the best. And then you are allowed to do what your mother has forbidden you by eating soup. You can slurp. The aroma is getting free. Your whole tongue is coming in contact with wine. And the wine becomes warmer. And this slurping sounds like that. So we had five wines to taste, I think. Five? Yeah. Bit tipsy now? <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not. No, but um, yeah, that was fun. That's good. It, you always learn so much during wine tastings, you know, because I had a, quite a few wine tastes in my life, and always you always learn something new. And he, he did a, he did a good job. He had a lot of good stories. Cool. He he was saying that he um, he was actually studying to become involved in banking, and then he was there with 200 people. And he had it an exam and he was like, I don't want to be with these people. And so he failed and now he's a winemaker. Cool. Thumbs up. So how many miles did you do? Oh, many, many. Every one. <laughs> we did them all, one way or another, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, everybody look. It was very difficult. Go. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for So I just said goodbye to everyone. Everyone just left the ship. Uh, we shared contacts and 
Well, so if I go to Canada, <laughs> then uh, I uh, there's some places I can stay. <laughs> it was it was a great week. Uh, it was really nice also to meet everyone. Um, beautiful landscapes and beautiful cities. Loved it. So thank you for watching this video. It would be great if you would like the video and subscribe. And see you next time. Happy cycling! Climbing up another hill, another castle, the last one. Well, it was worth it. Look at the view. Ooh.